Have you ever been frustrated by running a chainsaw that doesn't work quite right? Are you tired of sharpening your chain only to put it back on the chainsaw and then it still doesn't cut quite right? I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms and I used my chainsaws for years before I learned how to sharpen the chains very well. I'd keep buying new chains or have my dealers sharpen the chains for me. And while those are effective things to use from time to time, it is best to learn how to sharpen your chainsaw in the field so that you can do it quickly and easily. In this video, I'm going to show you how I sharpen my chainsaws, how I do it quickly, easily, and effectively. At first, it's going to be a little bit awkward you getting used to sharpening your chainsaw. I'm confident once you put some of these principles into practice, you will eat, learn quickly and easily how to keep your chainsaw sharp. So let's get started as I sharpen the chain on this steel MS-440. At a bare minimum, you'll want a pair of sturdy gloves. Leather is best for me. And you'll also want a round file that matches the size of your chain. We'll come back to the file size in just a moment. A file guide like this is helpful. What's also helpful is a vise that's known as a stump vise that you can use in the field. If you have a vise in your home shop or garage or something that you can use, that works even better. Now, if you have not sharpened your chain in a while, or if you've not sharpened the rakers, you'll need a flat file and you'll need a depth gauge that'll help you know whether or not you need to file the rakers. If you have the appropriate chain, you can use one of these two-in-one file sharpeners. I have one that'll fit this size chain but this chain is not compatible with it i also have one and i really like it for my ms261 which use a 325 pitch chain now if you don't know the size chain that you have you can look on the side of your bar this bar is pretty worn but if you look you can't really see it very well because of that scratch but that says 3 8 it could say 0.404 it could say 0.325 if you if you look on um, this saw you can see that it's got a if you look on this bar you can see that it has a 0.325 um, that's the pitch if you read carefully on the size of the file right there you can see that it says Oregon 730 seconds 5.5 millimeter that's the size that you use for a 3 8 chain and for the 325 chain you'll use a 3 16 inch file uh, the 3 16 inch file i believe is a 4.8 millimeter file if you're using uh, the metric system most of the time you'll find your round files have both of them on you there. might find a chain that says three-eighths and have a P under it, right beside the three-eighths. For a steel chainsaw, the three-eighths P means it's a three-eighths gauge chain, but it's a Pico chain, which means it's a lower profile. Uh, instead of being a 50 gauge chain, or in the case of this uh, 325 chain, it'll say, it says 0 0.063, Usually the 3 8 P chain has like a 0 .044 or 0 .048. I forget what gauge those chains normally are. If you have that, you'll need a different file size. If you have a 3 8 Pico size chain, you'll need the 5 seconds round file. <clears throat> normally, in many of Steel's products, for steel chainsaws, if you have like the MS-170, the MS-180, or something along those lines, or a pole saw, you'll find that they have the 3 8 Pico chain. Once you get up to the MS-250, they usually have a 325 chain. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of. This is your cutting tooth up here. This is your raker. Some people will call that the depth gauge, and it does control the depth at which the tooth cuts. When you've got your saw, when you're cutting a log, there's a little bit of a gap between the raker and your tooth. Your tooth is on 
your tooth is at an angle so as it sharpens as it wears and as you sharpen it you'll need to just file that raker down however filing the raker down too much can really mess up your chain in a little while i'll show you how to determine how much of that to file but normally if that's in the right place you can sharpen your chain three or four times and not really have to mess with that raker now in many of your videos you'll find that you have a little hump a third hump those are the steel rm3 chains low kickback hump you find that in steel's green label chains and those are really the best kind of chains to be using they don't dull as quickly as these chains they have lower kickback tendencies uh, and it's best for somebody who does not use a saw very much or also these chains dull faster they sharpen quicker but they also dull faster and require maintenance so normally normally i hone my chain every time i fill it up with gas or every other time i fill it up with gas depending on how much i'm using it and what i'm cutting it's real easy when you fill it up with gas to take uh, the three or four minutes and just run a chain through there and hone the edge of your chain <clears throat> this side profile right there is called the gullet that's your tip of the chain you'll notice it goes down at an angle and so you want your gullet to have a little bit of a curve in it when you start looking at the cutting tooth you'll notice that this one is really worn on the tip right there and rather than being a sharp point it's dull now many of your green chains will have what's called a semi chisel so that'll be rounded a bit but that's the pointed chain or the full chisel chain right there now you want to make sure you have teeth that are facing the left side and teeth that are facing the right side like this one and what that means is when it cuts it takes each tooth takes just the smallest amount of material off the log where the chain is running if one side is filed more than the other side even if they're both equally sharp if one side is filed unevenly from the other side then that's where you get your curve and that's why you might instead of be cutting straight down you might start cutting at a, a side angle that pulls to the left or to the right depending on whether the chain is worn the best way to determine if your chain is sharpened equally you can take a caliper and measure the length from there to there of each tooth there to there uh, after it's sharpened and make sure they're both the right size or you could have your dealer uh, sharpen them for you and they normally grind them at a set distance and will resharpen that chain and make sure all the teeth are at the right angle and the right size what i do is i make sure i file the same number of strokes on each tooth but what you'll notice is some teeth are worn more than others for example that tooth right there does not look as bad as that tooth and so what i do is i find the tooth that needs to be sharpened the most on the whole chain oh that one's got a burr on it so that one's going to need to be filed a good bit and i start with the dullest tooth and i go from there i figure out how many strokes it takes to sharpen that tooth where i need to sharpen it and then i sharpen all the other teeth the same amount you always want to make sure your chain is tight when you start sharpening so it doesn't move the organ brand file guide just snaps over and there's no way of tightening it any further the problem with it is that the file slides up and down along the guide while you're filing and it's a pain in the neck this still branded file guide has a shaped nose so that the file can only go in so far 
And what I really like about it is it has this thumb tightener. Allows you to tighten it so that it doesn't move. You can do it without it, but I prefer using a stump vise. I use that here. Works a little bit better in a stump than it does on a log because of the green. I usually put it toward the tip. The best thing about this file guide is that yes, you get the angles. However, the angle is set for 30 degrees, which some of my saws have 30 degree angles and some of them do not. But the thing that I like about it the most is that the gullet needs to be the right height compared to the top of the cutter tooth. And this file guide allows it to rest on there and cut that really well. Even when you get used to it, and after a while you'll get a feel for where you need to be sharpening. What I really like about this file guide the most is not that it's a guide, but that I can sharpen without cutting my fingers whether I have gloves on or not. Now, some of these teeth look really, really bad, and some of them are not so bad. This tooth right here, if you look carefully, you can see the burr up on the tip. Start with the worst tooth, and then I count how many strokes I need to take off of it, and I take that same number of strokes off of each tooth. I sharpened this tooth more than I sharpen any of the other saws when I normally sharpen them, primarily because it had that burr on the top of it and I filed them far enough down to get that burr out. So now I'll just go and sharpen 10 strokes, 15 strokes on each tooth now. Files are designed to file one way only. So when you start filing, you push the direction. Your handle will be the direction you push from. And so you'll get it lined up, and then you'll push in that direction. Pick it up and pull it back. Move on to the next tooth and do the same thing. My vise has come loose. This is the reason I normally straddle the power head, hold it with the inside of my thighs. Now, most of these teeth do not need as much work as I'm putting on them. However, to keep the saw, to keep the teeth the same size, I'm putting, I'm sharpening them all the same amount. Sometimes when I'm sharpening, especially if I don't have a stump vise, I'll hold the saw with one hand. If you have the file guide, it makes the one-handed cuts a good bit easier. I also like how it doesn't cut, I don't cut my finger on the tooth either. You can also sharpen the saw just without that guide. But I found that I tend to be more consistent with the height of the gullet if I use the file guide. I like using the file guide because if I have to use just one hand on it, it makes it a good bit easier. Alright, and now I've come back to the place where I started. And I'll start on this other side now as well. Now just being perfectly honest with you. I find it a lot easier to file with one hand most of the time, and so that's usually how I file it. I 
I'm right handed and so and so I find that if I sharpen from with one hand I can get on either side of the chain and make sure that I have a good cut both ways if I'm straddling and pushing with my left hand it just doesn't work out as much now if I had a good vise in a shop somewhere that isn't prone to move like this one is I could get on both sides and sharpen like this and then I could get on this side and sharpen that way but I've just found that it's a lot easier to move around the saw if I get it uh, done with one hand the reason I like having the file guide if I don't have the file position in the right place I can be sharpening here the whole time and never actually sharpen the cutting tooth which is this upper tip this is a case in point I freehanded this and it's real sharp right there but that cutting edge looks like mess because it never actually sharpened the cutting edge. If you're not used to hand sharpening your chains, I would suggest trying this depth gauge so that you'll get used to it. I would not suggest that you sharpen a raker without some kind of guide or gauge until you know the way your saw should be cutting uh, it's really really easy to mess this part up if the rakers are too short it takes too the cutting tooth takes too much wood and it'll bog your saw down if the cutting teeth are too shallow it won't cut enough wood and it takes forever to cut your log and you'll get this real fine powder until you get used to the height of your rakers, I would suggest that you really, really need to use some kind of gauge to determine whether your rakers are set to the same height. A homeowner or farm use saw, the mid-range saws, just do not have the power to cut very deeply and you can really, really mess yourself up if you're not careful. Um, the way you use them, this is steels. Here, I like the Oregon. Uh, tool a little bit better I, I feel like it's got a little bit more confidence but you put it on there and then you file and it will take just the smallest amount off if your teeth are in bad shape honestly I will normally put I usually do not use a depth gauge I just kind of go for the feel of my saw most of the time I'm using my steel MS-261 and after I sharpen it three or four times I may take one or two strokes off of these rakers depending on how well they cut. This is not sharpening and I did not think it needed it but it's not really needed right now. If your saw is cutting to the left or to the right you can do one of two things. Your easiest thing to do is to take your chain to a dealer and have them put it in a grinder to sharpen it. They make they grind it to the, so that all the teeth are at the same setting, and it's pretty standard. I don't sharpen my chains that way unless they're absolutely necessary. Because when you're cutting a lot and you're using a saw for, um, you know, 15, 20 hours of runtime a week, you need to cycle through a world of a lot of chains. Uh, the other thing is this still guide here you can use to measure the length of your cutters and so just make and what you do is you just make sure all your cutters are the same length if they're too long you grind you file them down a little bit more if they're relatively close you generally don't need to worry about it especially if when you're sharpening them you sharpen them the way I have and you take off the same amount of material off each cutting tooth so that's how I sharpen my saws in the field if I'm using it free-handed I just use a simple file guide to make sure my teeth are cut, but a lot of times I'll just freehand it as well. This, this is just a really simple way of sharpening your chain in the field. You get good results, and 
it saves you a lot of time, energy, and money in chains and many other things. This is how I sharpen my chainsaws in the field. Sometimes the easiest things to use are just a file and maybe a file guide, and you can keep your chain sharp and honed and ready for whatever lies ahead. I promise you, if you'll get into the habit of sharpening your chain yourself at first, the movements will seem awkward and clumsy, but once you get into the routine, it's just like lifting weights or any other routine matter. Once you get into the habit of doing it a particular way, you'll find that it happens quickly and easily and you'll build a lot more confidence and you'll save yourself a lot of time, energy, and effort when you're using your chainsaw and it'll also be safer to use as well. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends that you think would find it useful as well. Uh, subscribe to our channel, make sure you touch that bell so that you're notified of the updates that we have. Take care, I hope you have a great day, and check out our other videos.